Continuing our Marvel Cinematic Universe coverage on this channel today, we're going to be talking about Thor Love and Thunder. So we didn't get the first teaser trailer at Sunday Super Bowl, but we did get a pretty cool trailer for Doctor Strange 2 and also for Moon Knight. So we're going to be talking about a lot of leaks for Thor 4 and some toy leaks which suggest multiple things come in within Thor Love and Thunder. So yo, what is freaking good YouTube voice to you here? If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe to never miss any of the Marvel DC pop culture content we do on a daily basis. Subscribe to the channel, comment, like, share. It really helps push this channel into the algorithm and I very much appreciate it. Also, if you want to see the beautiful face behind the beautiful voice, just check us out on Instagram at WarStew. And also, if you want to interact with me personally, this is my smallest social media, so I do respond back to pretty much everyone. Twitter, WarStewG. Right, let's get into it. So, on our most recent video, we insinuated that because of the use of the Necrosword sword via the supposed villain of Thor Love and Thunder, who is supposed to be Christian Bale, former Batman playing Gore the God Butcherer. We hypothesized and came up with a theory that really it is the God of the symbiote, Null, who is behind absolutely everything, and I still think it's building up to a Null-based storyline in the MCU. So, as we know, the Necro sword was actually confirmed to be used by Hela in Thor Ragnarok. The death of Odin led to the return of Hela, the Asgardian goddess of death, which does line up with a lot of things. It was confirmed that Gore will actually be armed with the all-black Necro sword, which means this was also the weapon used by the goddess of death in Thor Ragnarok. But over the last few years, it's been revealed that the Necro sword was actually much older and tied to Null, the god of the symbiote and could even be dated back and have some correlation referring to Null to do with the Eternals movie, although there wasn't actually any indirect or direct correlation there. It is possible that Hela actually stole the sword from the symbiote god himself, and like I keep saying, it's all leading up to Secret Wars, it's all leading up to Secret Wars, and it's all leading up to Null. As we know, that is the master plan on one part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as we know there's multiple things going on with the MCU. I just think it's cool that they have tied the Necro Sword back to Thor Ragnarok and also the Necrosword and Null can be tied back to Venom 2 and there is massive potential crossover with Thor Love and Thunder and multiple things coming up. So the Necrosword played such an important role in the comics it would stand very good reason for it to be very important to the MCU going forward. As we know Null could take out literally anyone could demolish and deal with Thanos like he's freaking nothing. So recently we got some toy leaks for Thor Love and Thunder, which yes, does sound like a freaking porno. I'm going to keep saying that. But these toy leaks insinuate how or what Natalie Portman's hero superpowers will be. So what does it actually tell us? It doesn't really tell us a lot. But interesting enough, the yellow lighting effect piece on top of Milnor could hint at how the weapon is reforged in the movie. We can see in the toy image over the screen that she's wielding Milnor and Chris Hemsworth worth Thor is wielding Stormbreaker, but you can see the damage on Milnor, so it's definitely be repaired. A closer look, another lighting effect piece of Jane Foster Thor gives us some indication of what is coming up with the potential sword. Although it doesn't really tell us much, it does hint that there will be some reforging of some variants. And again, like I say, because Null is going to be coming at some point with the Necro Sword, it could have something to do with the magic infused from the Necro Sword itself which is very interesting. So, also in the news, we have got a bunch of plot leaks, which I know you guys love. So we're going to go over some and then correspond it to what is going on with this movie. So this is interesting. This one here is very interesting because this is dating back 10 months ago before most of this information was even real or was even out there officially. Gore the God Butcher kills Korg and quite a few Asgardians on Earth. Valkyrie is seriously wounded and not seen again until the end of the movie. Gore leaves when he discovers Thor is no longer on the planet. Yes, I know not all this is true, but there's certain instances and certain parts of this plot leak that I want to go over. So it says here, I'm pretty sure Gore kills Russell Crowe Zeus, or we are presumed he is dead. Now what's interesting here is this is only officially really came out in set photos that Russell Crowe will be in the movie, but this is dating back 10 months. So you've got to take a little closer look.
look at what this says. The beginning of the movie shows Gore killing Thor. We then find out he is an alternate Thor from a different universe. Mjolnir then shoots into a wormhole and Gore follows the multiverse. Is a big deal in this movie as well. And that would make a lot of sense. Because just because Doctor Strange 2 comes out before this and then this comes out just before the summer doesn't mean the multiverse storyline is done with. A few surviving Greek gods team up with Thor to fight Gore. Easily defeats them all. They are minor gods. Hercules has been rumoured, is mentioned, but not with this crew. Thor is rescued by the Guardians of the Galaxy with Jane carrying Milnor and has all the powers of the MV Thor. I have literally no idea how she goes from Earth to being with the Guardians of the Galaxy. Gore injures Star-Lord. Not badly, but he's knocked out. So as we know from the actual first set photo leaks that we got for this movie, that it is confirmed that yes, the Guardians of the Galaxy will be in this and for a continuity point of view and when we last seen Thor after Endgame, it would make a lot of sense. Sif sacrifices herself for Jane when the two of them are fighting Gore. There is a fight scene with Thor and Hercules over both being very childish about something. It's more comical than dramatic. Drax bets on Hercules whilst Rocket bets on Thor. Thor, Jane Foster, Hercules and Valkyrie all fight Gore. He loses and then runs away. I would assume he returns again. Thor decides to stay with his people on Earth and invites the surviving Greek gods to live with them as well as Jane stays with Thor but Valkyrie remains queen. That's very interesting. There is literally multiple plot leaks. So th this one goes back 10 months. Now this is the most recent plot leak and obviously you can look for plot holes but it is interesting because 10 months ago it says Russell Crowe was going to be in a movie. It wasn't confirmed then. It was just rumoured. So I believe you've got to take that with a bunch of validity. So the next plot leak opens up like this a little bit differently but we do know that when shooting for this movie started that Star Lord, aka Chris Pratt, was on set, etc. So this does make a lot of sense. The movie opens with an action sequence with the Guardians. It's clear that time has passed as Thor is fit. We do know Thor is going to be looking better because he looks freaking shredded and big. He's obviously been juicing. Come at me, bro. He's not natural and that's not hating. It's just fact. So we know this part could be true. Looking stronger than ever whilst Groot has grown. He isn't quite as big as he was in Garden of the Galaxy 1, but he's bigger. Thor is less depressed. He is having fun with the Guardians. Guardians, but he still doesn't seem in high spirits. Thor has somehow fixed Mjolnir, the original hammer, and is using that with Stormbreaker. In fights similar to Endgame before Steve picks up the hammer, Thor is contacted by Valkyrie about Jane Foster. Jane traveled to New Asgard looking for Thor, who wasn't there. Jane reveals that she has cancer and she knows Thor, so Valkyrie contacts Thor using the Guardian ship. Thor gets the Guardians to drop him off on Earth, where he goes to see Jane. The Asgardians who are more advanced with technology are trying to figure out how to save Jane. It turns out they can't really help her because if they don't, she will soon die. Thor feels hopeless, like he's lost everything and it's gonna lose somebody else he loves. Thor is determined to do whatever it takes. Jane, however, is weak due to having cancer and her long trip to New Asgard that she refuses any help at all. Flashback scene to when they broke up. It also shows what Jane has been doing after that. Jane was snapped by Thanos. She returned, but the side effect of the snap was that she got cancer due to the snap, which is apparently now a thing. Jane has been doing whatever it takes to survive and save herself, but went to New Asgard as a last ditch to tell Thor who she still considers the love of her life. Thor goes outside for some time to process what's going on. He sees a show going on. <laughs> yeah, it's the one for Thor Ragnarok. Matt Damon, Luke Hemsworth, and Melissa McCarthy. It's the uh, same vein as the one in Thor Ragnarok, but longer and even funnier. Meanwhile, Jane feels a surge due to the hammer that Thor left in the room. She feels drawn to it. She calls for it. She's seen Thor do it. Nothing happens the first few times. It's hilarious. Tiger Wittigi plays it up to make it funny. Then she she does it and the hammer comes to her and she becomes Thor. The explainer for her worthiness is that she was connected to the ether in the past. She is now worthy. Similar version in Age of Ultron. Gore the God Butcherer, similar to the comics, lost his family. Thanos snapped him. Now this is interesting because the other plot leak we went over last week said that Hela literally wiped out his whole family, whereas this says the snap wiped out his family. I mean, Hela wiping out all his family would make more sense than Gore comes back for 
redemption would make much more sense. When they returned, they couldn't sustain the population, which killed his pregnant wife and son. He stopped believing in the gods. He loved and started hunting gods one by one. There is a flashback that is showing all this potentially creating one of the best villains in the MCU. And this is actually true. Like, Gore the God Butcher is a freaking savage. So if this is the origin, the Thanos snap basically killed his pregnant wife, or if Hela killed the whole family and that's why he's coming out to take out all the gods, that would make sense. I'm so excited for this movie. Beta Ray Bill will appear towards the end of the movie to fight Gort. He is CGI with motion capture. Similar to Cork, unclear who will play him. Sif will die fighting Gore. Jane Foster doesn't die. Thor doesn't die in this movie. This is all I know for now. There is so much more about this film. I do know one of the post credit scenes and it involves the Guardians and the introduction of Adam Warlock properly. It was directed by Gunn recently as it started production. The holiday special and Guardians of Galaxy 3. Now, I guess you could debunk some of this because you could, but realistically, if we've learned anything over the whole spam of me covering plot leaks on this channel, is there's always somewhat truth to every plot leak, and that's why I love doing these plot leak based videos, because there is a lot of information out there which tells us this could be true. Obviously, there's a reason why Jane becomes worthy, and there is a reason why she needs an answer. So, obviously, I guess to stop the cancer, she becomes Thor, God, like almost. I mean, I don't know if that is the truth, but that is a really good explainer. And then we have the other plot leak, which was the original plot leak that we went over, but we're not going to go over it in full depth, which essentially said Thor is having fun. It's kind of similar to the other one. It says Thor is having intergalactic adventures with the Guardians of the Galaxy when Gore attacks and wounds him. Then announces that he will kill the remaining Asgardians on Earth. Thor goes there to protect them with a rocket. And then it essentially says Christian Bale is playing Gore, an alien race who is slaughtered by Hela. So it's a completely different perception in this one. This one doesn't really focus on how or why Jane Foster becomes Thor. So if you put them together, they do make a lot of sense. Gore will be motion capture, but his pre-necrosword form is going to be human-like. The dark energy mutates him and he becomes more monstrous as he absorbs more of it. You have no idea how powerful Gore the God Butcher is. But as I keep saying, Gore the God Butcher isn't even the villain. The real villain is not Null, and I believe Null is going to be introduced in a post credit scene because it makes sense. Hella stole the Necrosword. Null controls the Necrosword. It all makes sense. It's all connected. Kevin Feige doesn't do anything that isn't connected. Now, I know recently he came out and said some stuff about no more Avengers movies, but we all know that's going to happen in five years. We'll talk about that in the video probably tomorrow. So like always, guys, what do you think about this plot league? I really think that could be the origins of how Jane Foster becomes a female Thor to essentially save her life? Do you believe me or do you think my theory about Null being behind everything and Null being the villain is really going to happen? Do you like the plot leaks videos? I know you already do because you absolutely love them. Hercules, that's a freaking cool one. Really is a cool one. They've kept that one quiet because yes, there has been rumblings in the Marvel community, but we actually haven't got an official casting for Hercules as of the time we're recording this video. But there's been many, I guess you could say, wannabe scoopers talking about the fact that Henry Cavill could be Hercules. Now, I'm down for that. You guys know, big Henry Cavill fan. That would be insane. There's also been rumours that The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is going to be Hercules. Personally, he's too busy with everything else he's doing at the moment to add another role. But there was a theory a while back, I think about a year ago, where it essentially says they will kill off Russell Crowe, Zeus, in order to introduce Hercules into the MCU. And the most recent plot leak we've just gone over said, Gore kills Russell Crowe, Zeus, or we presume he's dead. So it would be interesting. I would prefer it if we had Zeus, aka Russell Crowe, and we also had Hercules, played by Henry Cavill. At this point, if they're not going to use Henry Cavill in the DC universe, just freaking pull him over to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Henry Cavill fans would be happy with that. I would be happy with that. And also then, Hercules could become a pinnacle part of the Avengers and could team up with the Avengers. And that's an ongoing theory. And then they could do some basic storyline. The gods of Olympus, as we know, multiple plot leaks do state that there's going to be multiple gods. He's not going to kill off all the gods. And Hercules could have a massive role going 
forward alongside the Black Knight, etc. in Avengers 5. So like always, guys, let me know what you think of these random plot leak videos where we talk about a lot of topics to do with Thor 4. As we know, Thor 4 is coming out in July. So we should be getting the trailer by the start of March, which is literally coming up very soon, or the end of March, because we need a trailer soon. They will go back to the additional six months marketing. Spider-Man No Way Home was an obsolete situation, but that was because of Sony Pictures. That wasn't because of Marvel Studios. Completely different situation. So like always, guys, check us out on Instagram at WarStew. Check us out on Twitter, WarStewG. Check us out on Twitch or TV forward slash WarStew. I will be streaming over there very, very soon. And like always, subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, share, tell everyone how freaking cool your dude is, WarStew. And I will catch you in another video very soon. Catch you later.